Merhaba everyone, me again. Today I'm going to make this other Turkish favorite dish that I have, which I learned from my aunt, rest in peace, and it's called Karniyarık. Karniyarık basically um, is, if I want to translate it to English properly, would be like split eggplant, uh, sort of, kind of. Um, so as the name includes, the main thing for this dish is going to be eggplant. Depending on how many people you're going to serve, you would need like perhaps like two per person. I'm going to again cook for myself, perhaps for two days. So I'm going to use four of them. Um, the other ingredient, the other main ingredient of this dish is going to be some sort of like meat. Um, I like beef, so I'm going to use beef. This is 4% diced minced uh, beef. Um, you can use uh, ground turkey, ground chicken, lamb, whatever you like. Um, one onion, a few garlic cloves. It again depends on your taste. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to use it. Or if you work during the day and you don't want to bother people with the smell of garlic, you don't have to use it. Um, two tomatoes, a um, few parsley, and of course the spices. These are our spices that we're going to use today. Um, again, as usual, these are my preferred spices, not necessarily in the original recipe. I actually don't know what is the original recipe, but uh, not necessarily that in the original recipe of this dish, they used these spices. These are things I like and the taste of the spice that I like to have in my dish. Um, cumin, chili, turmeric, ginger, cinnamon, red pepper, sorry, black pepper, and tomato paste. And the amount of the tomato paste that you see here is not the only amount I'm going to use. I'm going to use way more than this. Um, just for the display purposes, I put this much. Perhaps the amount that I'm going to use is going to be like five, six times more than this. So I would say maybe two like tablespoon full um, would be realistic, but I didn't want to put the whole thing here. Um, also, you see this giant bowl of water, it's salt water, and there is a reason for that is because after we peel the eggplants, um, don't ask me why, I don't know the main reason. I think like, you know, because eggplant has like this very sharp, bitter aftertaste. So what they do is like that they actually soak the eggplants into that um, salty water for like 30 minutes before they fry it. So, um, yeah, I guess so. I'm not 100% sure, I'm not 100% positive, but that's what they do. The other thing is actually, when they actually peel eggplant, um, they take this head or end, whatever it is, totally off, and they take this steam off. I usually do not do for some personal reasons, I just wash it truly and make it like pretty clean. Uh, but usually in the main recipe, what people do is like that they say cut the total end off. Okay, I'm going to show you how to peel this thing. Um, so they just, what they do is like that they make this type of lines on it. So they do not peel the whole thing, only like, you know, they peel one line and they peel another line and they leave some skin in the middle. You ne don't necessarily need this pillar that I'm losing, using. You can just do the same thing simply with a help of a knife with no problem. And then you just dump it inside the water. That's very simple. That's all you have to do. I show you another one. So basically this is what you do. And this is another oops sorry technical difficulties and maybe some from above and another one and another one and that's it i think you got the gist of it 
All right, this is how it looks. We leave them in the water for 30 minutes. And at the same time that we are waiting for these things to soak inside the water, uh, we dice the onions, tomato, parsley, and start frying those and cooking the beef. Okay, first we add the onion. I have the skillet with some olive oil. So first we add the onion and we fry it till it is somehow golden brown. Not totally fried, but a little golden brown. It takes like 15 minutes. And you don't want to have like the heat on a very high heat because it's going to burn it and that's exactly what we don't want to happen and something else i do not consider myself like a health cautious person i do not consider myself like a healthy eater etc so if you like any of these recipes you can feel free to modify it any way you like to your own dietary preferences. Um, for me, just the fact that I use olive oil is healthy enough. So I guess um, that's like what I do as far as the health goes. As the other thing that I do not do is I do not use salt in cooking, um, basically in general, if I may say. Um, and that has nothing to do with like, you know, being health cautious or anything. Uh, from my childhood, my parents did not use salt. Um, so my taste buds are not used to the taste of salt. So everything that I eat actually outside tastes very salty to me. So when I use like to cook at home for myself, I do not use salt. So um, that's another thing that I don't do, but like, um, of course, like all of these dishes, um, I'm sure the original recipe definitely has salt in it as well. Okay, our onion is kind of ready. So at this point, we add the minced or ground beef or whatever other type of meat you like to use. I don't know actually if I said I am using half a pound, so um, because I don't have that much excellence so you just add the beef inside and just give it a very good mix and keep frying till the beef the, the color should totally turn to like a grayish brownish i don't know what that color is but it's kind of like a brownish gray so you do this and keep uh, frying. Um, that's it. Very simple and very practical. Nothing special. When you're towards the end of your frying process, you add your garlic. If you add it beforehand, what's going to happen is like that the garlic is going to burn very fast. So you don't want that to happen. So what you do is like that you really add it towards the very end of the process. You just like fry it for like two minutes. And right after that, you add the diced tomato. So this way you will have like a little bit more liquid into this thing. Um, and this would prevent the garlic from burning. And it will just help with the whole flavors to just mix together and just you know that frying and flavor coming out at the same time cooking the other thing is like that the amount of frying depends on your taste like i really like 
roasted beef or any sort of meat that I'm having to be very, very well cooked. So, um, and be very well fried, basically. Um, that's why, first of all, when I'm buying the beef, I get like the leanest possible. At this point, I actually add the tomato, the diced tomato. So I buy the leanest um, possible. So basically this diced beef that I used, basically, sorry, minced beef, ground beef that I used here was like only 4% fat. And um, so I don't like that like greasy, fatty taste of ground beef. So that's why I'm just um, buying the leanest possible. And I let it kind of um, fry a little more than usual, but like, you know, if you only want it cooked after a few minutes, as soon as like the color turns to this color, that, that would be good enough for you. So the other thing that I like to do personally is like that when it gets to this point after I added the tomato, I add like a little bit of the tomato paste to this um, beef that I'm cooking and let the tomato paste also kind of fry with um, um, the rest of the ingredients. Frying the tomato paste this way helps with taking the entire flavor out. It really enhances the flavor of the tomato paste. This is um, how I was taught and ev forever this is how I'm doing it and I really don't know if it really makes a difference but this is what I was told and this is how I'm doing it and at this point I will go ahead and add all my spices into this mixture so ground pepper cinnamon ginger turmeric chili pepper and cumin mix the whole thing together the other thing that you can add if you have is saffron saffron if, if you're going to add saffron actually I would recommend that do not include turmeric and only add saffron Saffron has like this fantastic, amazing flavor, which enhances everything else. But like with turmeric together, they do not go very well. So um, you can also try adding saffron, which would be way better. Actually, I had some saffron, but I didn't think about it now. It just crossed my mind right now. Okay, at this stage, all we need to do, this is kind of ready to go. We just need to add one or half a glass of water and let it cook for maybe five, 10 minutes. And then we are good to go.